Hello, thank you for joining us today. My name is Steve Amon. I'm a cardiologist at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Today, I'm honored to welcome Dr. Hartzell Schaff to join us for a conversation. Hartzell, thanks for being here. Thank you. Uh, we wanted to talk this morning about your presidency uh, re relative to the American Association of Thoracic Surgery. Can you tell us a little bit about what that uh, association is and how it differs from some of the other national organizations? Uh, the AATS is a group of cardiac and general thoracic surgeons. The organization is almost 100 years old, and it has uh, uh, many aspects. The first is the annual meeting. That's one of the most important uh, uh, issues with the American Association for Thoracic Surgery. It also sponsors other uh, meetings throughout the year. We have a mitral valve uh, symposium, an aortic symposium and it co-sponsors many other uh, scientific meetings through the year, so it has a large educational effort. Uh, it also uh, publishes the Journal of Thoracic and Cardiovascular Surgery. So it has uh, the national meeting and then these other activities uh, throughout the year. So how does it differ from some of the other surgical societies or even the American Heart Association or American College of Cardiology? It differs from the cardiology meetings in, this, in the fact that it does include general thoracic surgeons. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a little different from the other surgical uh, organizations in that uh, it has a, a more ex ex exclusive membership in the sense that it's more uh, focused on academic uh, cardiovascular and thoracic surgeons. Okay. So what would you say the priorities have been in terms of focus of energies or resources uh, over the, over the t course of your presidency? There's a couple of things, Steve. Uh, the first is we've made a, a, a focus, we, we have focused our efforts on educational activities for residents, trying to engage the residents in the uh, annual meeting mm -hmm. um, and in sponsoring their uh, attendance at some of the other meetings. For example, we, we co-sponsor a critical care symposium in Washington, D.C. And this is very important for cardiac and thoracic surgery nowadays because there's declining interest in the specialty with uh, uh, medical students who perceive the road to be a little too long and a little too hard nowadays. So it's important for us to engage them at an early point in their training, uh, even engaging medical students in, in uh, surgical uh, specialties. So have you seen some success in that regard or are just launching some programs to engage those younger learners? Well, we, we've seen success. I think, I think that there's, there's been an uptick in the interest in, in cardiac and thoracic surgery uh, through the match. A couple of things account for that. One are these activities that we just discussed. The other is the development of six-year residencies. Uh, in the past, the, the training path for cardiac and thoracic surgery involved five years of general surgery, possibly a year of research, and then a three-year residency in, in thoracic surgery. Now we have a more streamlined path in many medical centers, not all, but in, in many medical centers, we have six-year programs which take medical students from their first day after medical school and have a six-year curriculum. So that the training now is, is considerably shortened and, and focused. Mm -hmm. these, uh, these people come out with boards in thoracic and cardiovascular surgery, but don't have the, the boards in general surgery. Okay. With the evolution of delivering heart surgical options, such as uh, hybrid procedures, the transcatheter valve options, uh, is that getting more interest for the residents, the medical students, and, and where do you see that going from your uh, viewpoint as a leader in this area? Well, I think our challenge is to make that an exciting part of our specialty, and, and instead of residents viewing that as a threat to them going into surgery, saying, gee, I'm not sure if there's going to be enough business for us to do as surgeons because the cardiologists will be doing it, I think we have to emphasize the collaborative nature of, of most of the programs uh, nowadays. Um, and I think that, that, that many of the residents see that. They, they understand that minimally invasive surgery is important and that the, the catheter techniques, at least, at least right now, is part of the surgical practice as well. You know, I think the evolution of the heart team concept is really gonna engage people uh, on both the medical and uh, procedural side of right. our specialty. Yep, I agree. Yeah. 
Hartzell, thank you for being here today. Can you remind us of the dates of this year's AATS meeting? We're excited to host the AATS in Minneapolis. Uh, it'll, the dates of the meeting are May 4th through May 8th. It's the first time that the AATS has met in Minneapolis, although in the early days of the organization there was one um, meeting in Rochester, Minnesota. But uh, we're very pleased to be able to bring the AATS to, to Minneapolis, where really we had the birthplace of cardiac surgery with the efforts of John Kirkland uh, in Rochester uh, and Dr. Lillenhai at the University of Minnesota. Thank you. Uh, we want to thank Dr. Schaff, and we want to thank the audience for joining us today. And please uh, return in the future for more conversations with Mayo Cardiology.